welcome back to the journal room. This is the Office of Youth Ministry team. I am Natalie Kapelik Nixon, or Miss Natalie for some of you. And let's see, tonight we have with us, I'm going to go in my Brady Bunch squares, cuts it in a Michaela. Hi. Oops, sorry. Justina and Elena. She's she's here. She's hiding in the journal room. We'll bring her out later. So we hope that you've had a good start to uh, your, using your prayer journals. It does take a lot when you're first getting started because you want to set it up the way you need to. And then once you kind of have that all together, you can really start focusing on your prayer and what you're meditating on and what you're reflecting on. Uh, as we move into the second week, we start with the Sunday of orthodoxy. So if we're kind of thinking, well, what does it mean to us in our prayer life? What does the Sunday of orthodoxy mean? Uh, you know, just take a minute to reflect on what the what that day is and why it's at the beginning of Great Lent. So for a, quite a long time, several uh, icons were taken out of the churches and there was sort of this back and forth between what they called the iconoclasts. Those are those who thought that icon using icons were idol worship and those that were for having icons in the church. And it was, you know, a sad uh, part of the of church history and many icons were burned and destroyed. But then there were many who took icons and they hid them so that they could hopefully be brought back into the churches. And at one of the, and at the seventh ecumenical council, if you don't know what that is, I'll look up your ecumenical council so you know what that means. At the seventh ecumenical council, um, they determined that icons were not, you know, we don't worship icons. It's not idol worship and that they are an essential part of how we worship. Um, that they help us to come closer to Christ and his saints. Um, so on the Sunday of Orthodoxy, they brought the icons back into the churches and they paraded through the streets with the icons. So it's quite an amazing thing when you think about it. And I know for me, um, I love it because it's just such a beautiful service when we do the prayers for Sunday of Orthodoxy. And in my parish, everybody brings an icon. The priest, uh, when you participate in Sunday of Orthodoxy, listen to the prayers that he says um, after the procession, because it's almost like a cool kind of rally, you know, to the faith. And, you know, why we're Orthodox and why we should proclaim it to the world that we're Orthodox. And then after he makes these statements, the entire body of the church says the creed together while holding their icons. And it's a very powerful and moving um, experience. And, and I think for me, that sometimes within my prayer life, something that I need to remember about the creed, you know, the creed, we learn it. And we kind of say it, but, you know, to remember that that is a statement of my faith. And so the Sunday of Orthodoxy reminds me of that. So I think during the week, this second week of, of um, Great Lent, I'm going to focus on, you know, proclaiming my faith. What does that mean uh, to me and how the creed in my prayer life uh it needs to become more of an affirmation in my own life. So that's kind of what I'm going to be looking at with Sunday of Orthodoxy Week. Katarina, I'm going to toss it over to you. So I already got my journal kind of started already, talking about the Sunday of Orthodoxy. Um, I started mine with uh, the Trapar for the Sunday of Orthodoxy and a quote from John of Damascus about icons. So that's kind of how I started mine. Um, can, I, can, I coerce you into, can I coerce you into singing the trope bar for us? Absolutely not. Keep going. I don't think, I don't think 
anyone wants that. <laughs> so I decided I'm gonna do an icon page um, in this section. I was didn't print mine out, but I have selected a few of my icons. I have one from the Sunday of Orthodoxy um, that we use. I have one of St. Catherine, who's my patron saint, um, St. Mary Magdalene, who I really hold close to my heart because my grandma really loved her. So I really like her icon. Um, one of St. Thomas, because it reminds me of my favorite place, St. Thomas Chapel. Um, so those are just a few of the ones that I'm going to put in my book. And then next, I just do some reflecting about icons and what they mean to me and how I use them in my, da in my daily life. Um, throughout school, I was always someone who was a visual learner. I really like to see things when I learn. So icons really help me in learning about um, the saints and what's going on in the church. So they're really important to me in that way. And I also am going to talk about how um, how I can re reaffirm my faith in my daily life and what, what steps I need to take to best reaffirm my faith and decide what I need to do to do that during this Lenten season. Um, I'm also going to do some reflection after the fact. Um, we're doing something really cool at my church this Sunday. Um, we are doing a procession of a procession of icons down the main road in south side of Pittsburgh where I'm from um, with another orthodox church in the area and we are going to block off the road and all process with our icons and then meet and do a prayer service outside together so that'll be a really nice way of reaffirming my faith this week with people that I know people I don't know and really spreading orthodoxy through um, our area in the south side of Pittsburgh so that's what I'm planning to do this week so many super cool things you're talking about. First of all, that you get to do that in Pittsburgh. That's pretty awesome. And if I also understand correctly, you're getting icons on loan from a museum. We are. Yes. Which um, is they're hope, a, I, from what I understand, they're hoping to do a big procession in Pittsburgh. So they're using us as kind of like a trial run. Um, like just between us, our two churches, we're only a block away. So it's nothing... Nothing crazy, but they're hoping to use this as a test run for hopefully bigger things in the future. It's pretty, pretty cool, Katarina. That is excited. Cool. And I like that you brought up like that you're a visual learner and 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 that's why icon, you know, you're gonna reflect on that with your icons. And I think that's such a good thing that you bring up. That's really one of the things icons do for us within orthodoxy is they visually help us, you know, we are a church of the five senses. We say that often and, you know, icons help us in our prayer life, you know, and, and, and if any of you've ever just taken an icon and sat in front of it quietly and, you know, kind of meditated in that way and reflected in that way, not even coming up with, you know, prayers or things like that, but, you know, just sitting with that icon can be a prayer in and of itself. So I'm glad that you said that. That's one of the reasons we have them. All right. Okay. Oh, she's taking a drink. Okay, love. We get parched in the journal in the journal room. We talk a lot. Me too. Hey, I'm Michaela. Um, so I did one page so far of my Sunday of Orthodoxy um, journal. But I just like picked an icon. Oh. It's so, ah, I picked an icon and then two tones that are usually set in church. Oh no, you can't see them, but. Yeah, just hold it up and leave it there. That's what I had to do. It'll, you're, it'll readjust there. Ah, there Perfect. we go. There are two tones that I found. Um, that are usually said during the Sunday of Orthodoxy service. Um, and then I kind of did what, or um, Katarina did too. I haven't started it, but I did write icon page on, and I plan on putting um, an icon of my patron saint, which is Saint Archangel Michael. And I plan on doing Saint Peter and Paul because that's the um, patron saints of the church that I grew up in. Um, and then an icon of like the Sunday of Orthodoxy and stuff like that. Um, 
What I plan on kind of focusing on is I'm like super guilty and I'm sure we all are at some point of like venerating an icon or crossing yourselves and not actually thinking about what you're doing and just kind of like manually doing it. Um, so I definitely plan on focusing more on like actually thinking about the action I'm doing um, and like the action of venerating. Um, and also like learning more about what I'm actually venerating. Um, Cause sometimes I'll like venerate an icon and not actually know like what the icon is truly about. Um, and that's like kind of sad because my dad's an iconographer, but <laughs> um, he, he will be a great tool that I can use to ask about like what icons are in the church and the stories behind all of them. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I plan on focusing is just like kind of taking it in more and not just like doing things because we just do them in church. That's it. Hi, dude. Hi. So he has been working on his journal too, right, Theo? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you know where you put it? Yes. yes. It's upstairs. You're going to uh, come and, and hang out with us in the journal room next time? Yeah. All right. All right. Say so bye, everybody. Bye. All right. I told you we were going to have guests in the journal room. <laughs> Uh, so Michaela yeah I think you're right I think we become so automatic when we venerate crosses or icons we don't really think about what we're doing and why we're doing it and that when we venerate it we're not only showing you know our reverence because it is something that's holy but when we venerate it is a prayer in and of itself you know we should you know, be thinking and, and we should be in a prayerful mind when we venerate that icon. So I'm glad you brought that up. See, you two are so far ahead tonight. I don't know what I'm thinking for this for last week. I'm still on the first week. Speaking of which, before I go over, shoot it over to Justina, I did want to share and I completely forgot, like with the, the can of St. Andrew of Crete, I hope you've all been able to, you were all able to participate in the service at least once. Um, it's broken up into four nights over the week. Some, most of them are do it within four nights. Um, and, you know, St. Andrew, a canon, uh, has all, has different verses. And then there is um, a verse that's repeated. So the verse that's repeated in his is, have mercy on me, oh God, have mercy on me. And so I've been, you know, reflecting on that, but, you know, he talks in each one about repentance, repentance and forgiveness, each of the verses. And so I kind of sat down and wrote my own verses of things that I struggle with in, that I need to repent about. And um, so I kind of, I'm not going to show you what I'm working on, but I have, um, the have mercy on me, Lord, have mercy on me. And then underneath each of the verses and then each page, I decided to do one a day where I would reflect sort of the way that St. Andrew of Crete did. So, you know, just because the first week's over, it doesn't mean it's something you still can't do. Um, but I thought I'd share that with you all. That was something I did. So Justina, what do you got going on in your beautiful journal? She's the crafty one, everybody. What's going on in your journal? I haven't written anything yet, but I'm going to, on the first page, I'm going to put down the history of Sunday Orthodoxy. And then on the next page, I'm going to write the creed. And then I'm going to focus on the creed this week. And on the next page, I'm going to put like a reflection of what the creed kind of like says to me whenever I'm thinking it or saying it there's a lot to unpack in the creed yeah yeah and that's all i have so far that's a lot <laughs> don't worry about it. but since it is sunny worth actually you already have a nice icon section in yours do you want to share some of your icons again yeah i'm going to add more but i got the, these two 
And just leave that up there for a second, Jacinta. So for our younger journalers, you know, maybe those who aren't going to be writing as much, you know, just kind of taking the time of putting your icons in your journal and, you know, see how just in a left space next to them, you could either write something that you love about that icon or how that icon makes you feel, or you could even look, I went out and I got my stickers. You could even illuminate them, make them look even more beautiful. So I like how just in a left space. And I have like some throughout my journal too. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So we're going to ask Miss Elena what she did with her journal. Elena, we're going to bring you out. Hi, Miss Natalie. Hi, everyone. I'm so excited to finally join you. Um, it's great Lent and something that I wanted to focus on is building a prayer journal. So I have mine right here and I know a lot of the interns shared theirs last week, but I'm going to share mine this week and it's, I just started. So it's very simple. I ended up going to a Jesuit university and one of those things that I liked doing was doing the examine. Um, and it's just something that I do at the end of the day to reflect on how my day is and what I'm grateful for. And then some other parts are sectioned off my journal into different tabs. So then my other section is just prayers that I like and, um, yeah, just different prayers and for different needs. Some well, Lena, I love your use of washi tape. I know it's, I got a little excited. <laughs> I'm no, I'm obsessed with washi tape. Yeah, very exciting. And then the last part, of course, is for my uh, like prayer list. So I'll add names on it towards. Oh my gosh, so cute. <laughs> very nice. So that's something that I do want to focus on during Lent is really working on in the prayer journal and using it as a tool for prayer. Um, as for the first week, for me, it's always a way of getting into hang of things. So definitely diet is one of those things that, you know, getting used to not eating the dairy and meats, but also, um, rearranging my schedule so I can attend those services because we only hear them once a year and they are beautiful services if you do listen to them. And I personally enjoy them. So, um, I try to really fix my schedule so I have time to either go to church before or after my job. Um, and that's really one of the biggest struggles like of the first week of life is getting into the hang of things. I feel like further on I get into a routine and then it's much easier, but it's definitely that first week. And then of course it's reflection, um, reflecting on what I want to focus on during this Lent, um, what I want to accomplish by Pascha and uh, what kind of my goals are for this year. Um, and then since this is the first week of Lent and it's Sunday of Orthodoxy, it's always a, something that I reflect on is, you know, what the Orthodox faith means to me. And I personally love our faith. I love the beauty of it. I love the scripture. I love the traditions of icons and the way the services are. And it's just something that really gets me excited about, um, about like our religion and about our traditions that we have in the church. So it's something that I'm very thankful for that I was brought up Orthodox and that I am actively um, in, an orth in an active Orthodox community. So um, we wanted to show a little bit for our younger journaler, something they could do. And um, my son Theo started working on his, it's not finished yet. Um, but you can see he found, we have a coloring icon of the Sunday of Orthodoxy, and he's going to color that. But he's already put it on his special paper, and you can see he started putting some gems. I told you he likes the sparkles uh, on here. So if for our younger journalers who maybe aren't writing as much yet, remember that your journal can, you can also pray through, um, you know, just making something beautiful and making something with icons and thinking about them and thinking about the special day. And maybe your parents, if you're not writing yet, could help you write down some words if you'd like to write them down. Um, for kind of our like in-between journalers, uh, you know, you all uh, can, can maybe um, 
take a little bit of both, you know, put some icons in your, your journal, but also write a little bit about, you know, if you really listen to the service or, um, you know, uh, I think it was Justina who was saying she's going to focus on the creed. So, you know, most of our, our junior journal journalers know what the creed is. So maybe take some time and do that. Uh, Miss Lynn, I have a question. Of course. We have not been able to offer anything for our Ukrainian speaking journalers yet. Okay. I know, I'm putting her on the spot, everybody. So if in Ukrainian, um, just some of the words we've been using have been, um, you know, how do you say like great Lent, forgiveness? Veliki peace is great Lent. Uh, forgiveness is proshchenya. Um, you could also say thankful, blahodach, uh, prayer, molitva, any others you could? <laughs> well, that's what we've been, and, and, and icons are easy, ikona, right? Yeah. So, so those are all the sort of things that you could, those are the words you would be using in your prayer journal. You know, if you wanted to make sort of your titles and everything in, in Ukrainian. Um, I think we're good unless there was anything else you wanted to share today elena i think the ladies did theirs already no i think you know the tips that you gave are great and even as a young adult i find even printing out an icon from google and like just meditating and coloring it in sometimes i'll do that at work when i have a spare minute um just to like i don't know it like makes you think about like how this icon was written in the story of the icon itself so i think these are all great tips that you've offered especially for our young uh journals journalists here all right everyone thank you again for joining us in the journal room uh if you would like to have some of the resources that we're using or even our icons we're all sharing things in in the journal uh the google journal classroom for you and all you have to do is click on the link at the Office of Youth Ministry website, and you can access all those resources. So uh, before we go, um, Katarina is going to lead us in a prayer. And Katarina, you can tell everyone what prayer we're going to do tonight. So in my journal, I put the trapar for Sunday of Orthodoxy. So I will just read that to you all. So Father, Son, we venerate your most pure image, O good one, and ask forgiveness of our transgressions, O Christ God. Of your own will, you were pleased to ascend the cross in the faith, to deliver your creatures from bondage of the enemy. Therefore, with thanksgiving, we cry aloud to you. You have filled all with joy, O our Savior, by coming to save the world. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, team. See you next week. Hope you have another beautiful week of great one. Bye.